Today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about these two lights. There's the Nanlite FC300B and the Nanlite FC500B. But first, let me explain because most creators get very confused when they see a brand with so many different ranges. And I'm going to explain where the FC range fits in and why it's probably for you. Welcome back to the channel. Now, I think most creators, when they kind of go out and start buying lighting, they get very overwhelmed with the offerings that are out there. In the end, they end up buying a whole bunch of lights that they don't really use all of them because they've kind of bought wrong in the beginning. Now, Nanlite does have three different ranges, the FS, the FC, which is this one, as well as the Forza. Now, those three ranges are exactly like that from least expensive to most expensive. So why is it that this new FC range, and when I say it's new, it's, it's not that new. It's, it came out, I think, this year or end of last year, but really only marketed this year. And that is because of four things, the price, the power, the availability, and the ecosystem. So let's talk about power and availability. The FC range now has a 60B, 120B, a 300B, a 500B, and just to make sure that no one buys any RGB lights out there, they dropped a 500C, which is a 500 watt RGB light. And the price on it is absolutely amazing. Basically, Nanlite covers absolutely every type of power that any kind of small to medium sized creator would ever need, going from 60 watt all the way up to 500 watt. And the biggest reason why so much power like that has to be affordable is because nowadays you're not just doing photo, but video too. And that leads me to today's sponsor. When it comes to video, you do need cool music, like throughout this video and the super cool intro that you saw. And I know what you're thinking, it's just an ad sponsor, it's a plug, not the case. I've been using Soundstripe for over four or five years and Soundstripe's new AI editing is absolutely mental. I actually did a whole video on Soundstripe's AI song editing, you can check it over here. Basically what it does is, You've got a four minute song, you've got a 30 second edit or a one minute edit. Soundstripe has pre-categorized that entire song into little segments and you can kind of take the beginning, the middle and the end and just click and it drops into a new timeline. You can pick, you want that to be 20 seconds, you want to fill it out to 30 seconds, 40 seconds, two minutes. It automatically customizes the beats and takes the best parts of the songs that you selected and cuts it into an edit that works for your edit. And that's why Soundstripe is the sponsor of today's video. If you want to go and check out Soundstripe's new AI song editing, I will leave a link in the description, which is www.soundstripe.com forward slash rich. And just by the way, right now, up until 2nd of December, so if you are watching this afterwards, I'm sorry, but you're missing out on 25% discount on all yearly plans. Check it out. Price. Now the FC range, like I said, is split right in the middle between the FS and the Forza, Forza being the most expensive. Now the only thing that you do lose when you go from the Forza to this is a little bit of plastic that's on the FC range, but the rest of it is pretty much identical. The Forza does have a ballast, so you have your power controls that you can hang halfway down. And then the other thing is that there is no green and magenta shift. Now the green and magenta shift is really there because of one, your camera's white balance isn't that great, so you need that green and magenta shift or the location isn't that great, or the light output isn't as accurate as it should be. And that's not with the FC range, because in actual fact, I believe the Forza cob is actually the cob that they use within the FC 500, meaning that there is no money spared when it came to making these. Now the 300B retails for $479. And I actually think there's a couple of promos running on this, especially because Black Friday is coming up. So if you are watching it at this time, I will drop a couple of links in the description where you can pick these up at a really good price. And the 500B retails for $559. Not much of a price difference between the two for that extra little bit of output, which is definitely worthwhile. Now this is far more affordable than anything else remotely close to this offering ecosystem. Now with Nanlite's new Nanlink 2.0 app, if you can go back on almost every single light video that I've made, and I always talk about apps and say that I don't use them, Nanlite's app is the only one that I actually do use. It's amazing, especially if you have a whole bunch of lights in an ecosystem. So on all my client jobs, these are the two lights that I do take out. Unless I'm taking an RGB light, then I will bring in a third light. 
But most of the time when you're doing interviews and corporate work, these two lights are strong enough to handle pretty much anything that you throw at them. And using the Nanlink app, well, this is amazing. You can set up your lighting structure, you can place your scene, you can add a talent on the actual app, you can add your soft boxes. It's amazing to just kind of adjust on the fly. And this is why I say, is the ballast really necessary? With Nanlink's new app, I don't think so. Unless you maybe, you know, you have a gaffer on site that's really kind of into it and he doesn't want to use the app. But once you're a kind of one man crew and a creator, you really don't mind the app. Now that all that is out the way, let me get to the FC300 and 500B. After all, that is kind of why you are here. Now they do come in these foam cases. Now I know what you're thinking. You're going to kind of moan about the foam cases. When DJI launched their DJI Ronin in the foam case, they were absolutely terrible. So many people complained about the foam case because they kind of broke. I think the way they've made these has gone a little bit further because I have severely tried to damage these, throwing them in the boot, accidentally bumped them against walls on the ground. My kids have played on these, sat on them, climbed on them, and they hold up pretty damn decent. And the reason that I bring that up is because a lot of lights nowadays, when they are affordable, like these FC range lights, they don't come with a bag. And that is extremely important unless you are based in one specific location. In the studio over here, I usually put up my lights that don't have bags because I don't kind of carry them around with me and they stay in studio. You do get a power cable, a power module, the light which does have plastic on the actual body. Now this plastic isn't bad at all. The bonus part of that is it looks professional. I like the simplistic lines, the little blue hint of color that's on it looks great. There's a massive fan situated at the bottom with a vent right through the entire light. And most importantly, the yoke on this thing is absolutely tough. You can really tighten this up as hard as you want. It's solid metal. This is even metal. Everything on this is just rings quality. So basically the parts that were really crucial, Nanlite didn't skimp at all. Now the size between these two is very close. The 500 is a little bit bigger than the 300. It's not major, but it is noticeable when you do have them in hand. Also, you'll see the cob on the 500 is a bit bigger than the 300. Unlike a lot of affordable lights nowadays, like my small rig lights, everything was kind of plastic, including the housing around the cob, which is the chip on board. Now my small rig light actually melted and it's now stuck in a bag over there. So it melted around the cob, so I don't really use it. It melted within an optical snoot. This is not gonna happen. Now moving to the back of the light, it has a pretty small but very bright little screen. It has a menu and a mode button which allows you to access the menu, change the mode if you need the usual lighting, TV, and all those different types of effects that I only use when I want to be super creative. So it is nice that they're there. It has two dials, one for brightness and one for Kelvin adjustment. The brightness actually goes in 0.1% increments, which is great. The temperature on both of these lights goes from 2,700 to 6,500 Kelvin. It does have a DMX port and a USB port for updates. And that's all. But that's all that you actually need. Not only do these lights look professional and feel robust, but they are pretty tough. Let me show you. All right, so just to give you a little bit of a terrible demonstration on how strong this is. This light was standing over here while I was filming now to do a to get the camera behind it so I can show you the menu and uh, this whole thing was sitting up here and uh, I pulled the light and it fell while it was on completely head first on the top like that. I did hear something shoot off somewhere, sound like a piece of plastic, maybe broke, but um could have landed on something else that broke because uh oh no there that's what i broke right there that but it took a really hard fall straight onto the top of it so if you are wondering like i said they are durable and they built like tanks that is how they are Sorry, Nanlite, but uh, that is what happens when creators try and film the product instead of actually using the product. Now, are they bright? Well, what point would a review be if I didn't actually show you how bright these lights really are? Or, as a matter of fact, a real-world test. I'm not really into all the lux and what they output. 
I don't think any of us really are. So let me show you what these two lights look like side by side so you can kind of see which one's brighter. Now, spoiler alert, the 500 is a bit brighter than the 300, but it's probably not as much as you think. You can see here as I lift up the f-stop to f11 just to kind of let as little light into the camera as possible. You can see how much extra power that 500B has. So where does that brightness difference come in? Well, the reality is when you throw these in a softbox, softbox diminishes power because it's stopping light from passing through as it softens the light. And that's where that extra boost in the 500 is definitely worthwhile. This is why I say something like a 300 or 120 or 200 light is always great as a kicker light and perhaps not a key light. Now, when it comes to photography, most photographers resort to strobes. And I get that. I was a photographer for many years solely and I use strobes. Strobes freeze the motion it kind of freezes that motion and you get the ultra clear picture. But the problem was years ago, as photographers, LED lights were just terrible. Finding a very bright LED light was super expensive and really, really big, and you wouldn't be able to power it with an inverter battery. So some little UPS kind of power supply that you can carry out on set or on a location. Now with these types of lights, you can do that. And because you're a creator nowadays that does photo and video, because apparently we have to do both, strobes just don't cut it anymore. Unfortunately, you cannot go to a shoot and just kind of leave with a zero video. So by being able to put good light on a subject or on your scene and be able to switch to photo and video backwards and forwards easily, something that wasn't possible before at this price point. I've used this from headshots to outdoor locations. I've used my 300 and 500 on multiple shoots over the past few months, client interviews, content for brands. The list literally goes on. So who's it for? As I said, if you're a hybrid photographer or videographer, or you're just a videographer that needs good lighting, these are great. Powerful, easy to use, robust, they look professional, they don't look super tiny, and they push out some serious power. And whilst I know that constant light can never replace strobes because of the flash and the freezing of motion, dragging your shutter and all those things, the thing is, cameras have gotten so good, IBIS has gotten so good, that camera shake is a thing of the past. So using constant light for photos has become a thing, and it's now possible, and you're not gonna have to go drop thousands and thousands of dollars just to get a perfect shot. For video interviews, short films, and all other video content, this is more than you need. And it's at a price that you can actually afford. Honestly, I love the FC300 and I love the FC500, but if I had some advice for you on where to spend your money and what to do, let me give you some free advice. Personally, I'd buy an FC500. I probably wouldn't buy an FC300 unless you need another key light or another strong light and you don't wanna spend that much on another 500. I would go an FC500, an FS120 as a kicker light, then I'd throw in an FC500C, which is your RGB light, then you have a three light setup. You have a key light, a rim light, a creative light, and if you really wanted to get in the mix, go get yourself one of the new Pavo tubes. You've got four lights that you control with the Nanlink app, and you can get extremely creative. Once you've got a setup like that, you probably don't need another light for many years to come. To be quite honest, I don't know who's going to be able to top this. And sure, it's gonna be pretty tough to do a review on a light when Nanlite goes and drops something like this at this price point with this power. It makes it very tough for any other brand to compete. Now, I do wanna say thanks to Nanlite and Movie Vision for supporting me on this Nanlite journey. We actually held a workshop not too long ago where we had 30 creators come and actually tried the Nanlite FC range and a couple of other Nanlite stuff. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, he's made this review because Nanlite has sent him these lights. I have been using Nanlite for about four to five years already. I absolutely love Nanlite. Every creator locally in my country and in my town that knows me honestly knows I'm an avid supporter of Nanlite. Like there's a couple of brands that I've worked with over the years and I've loved them and I've adored them. And I think a lot of it is just down to the people that work for those brands. Movie Vision in South Africa is such an amazing company to work with and be a part of. The guys at Hollyland, at guys at OC. Honestly, there's some brands that are just there and that good 
because it's the people behind the brand. And that's what's happened with Nanite. I will drop a couple of links in the description where you can head over and check these out. If you do want to pick them up, you can. I'm not forcing you. I just wanted to come on here, give you my opinion of what it's been like using these over the past six to eight months. So thanks for watching, wherever you are in the world. Have a good day, good evening, good night, goodbye.